नमामि चन्मयं देवं सद्गुरुं ब्रह्मवित्वरं माय सेल्यूटेशंस टू एवरीवन प्रेजेंट हियर भारत वाज अ वेरी रिच कंट्री यू गो बैक थाउजेंड इयर्स अगो the gdp of our nation at that time was 32% and uh, we 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 were very advanced in uh, merchant navy we used to travel across uh, whole world and we were doing business that's why we were uh, you know like you had 32% of the world's gdp as uh, the you know the merchant navy brought that kind of an income but this country had values and that came from hindu shastra gurukula education where people respected we went across the borders extended hands of friendship not to loot and plunder even though we were so advanced we never attacked a nation and our neighbor china was also a very civilized uh, country and we have a civilizational friendship so between china and bharat we almost had 56% of the world gdp to nations not continents and then slowly the unfortunate things started happening to bharat invasions took place and we were not ready for that kind of a war which happened even at ramayan time mahabharat time wars had rules so bharat fought wars with rules so there were very clear rules of war that shows the the level of civilization just for example in mahabharat the kitchen was common for pandavas and the kauravas can you imagine a war happening like that from the same kitchen the food is served to both so the rules and the civilization was very different and we fought wars with those values if a king wins over he cannot touch the enemy's women nor slave their children or burn their temples or destroy their wealth that was not allowed and no king did that so we had wars with these values but unfortunately when people started attacking bharat from uh, different parts of the world uzbekistan that's where the babar came from their civilizational values were different they came in attacked and first thing they did was capture the women slaved the children and paraded women nude in the same roads broke temples and it was very very barbaric war so bharat was not ready for it and that's when we started losing so 500 years ago from uzbekistan babar came and destroyed one of our main temples in bharat seven cities were called saptapuri ayodhya mathura kashi dwarka avantika that is ujjain maya that is haridwar and uh, kanchi in the south these are seven states uh, seven cities uh, saptapuri and they were called mokshapuri very spiritual centers so ayodhya tops the list because ram lived there and there was a magnificent temple imagine a temple 500 years ago which had on the basement 50 pillars and on top 12 pillars when the temple was uh, uh, demolished and a mosque was built and later when the mosque it was not even a mosque because people were not doing namaz and when that structure was pulled down people found that it was a massive temple so this happened to us and uh, 75 wars took place to capture ayodhya back every time you capture for a short while 
and uh, some attack it would go. That way it happened. And there was another temple prior to this which was destroyed was uh, Somnath in Gujarat. Six times that was destroyed, Mohammed Ghazni. And six times we built it again. Same way Ayodhya, there were 75 wars. Uh, and uh, three lakh plus people gave their lives for that uh, one mandir. And uh, the last one was somewhere in 1992, where... Uh, when a free India also, one waited for a long time that, uh, you know, the temple government would give the temple, the court would give the verdict, but it got delayed, delayed, delayed. Imagine Bharat got independence in 47 and this temple issue was not sorted for 45 years. That's when the public, the Hindu lost their cool. They said this won't work, the government or the courts are not giving permission. 45 years we waited for it. Then there was a big movement called Ramajanma Bhumi movement. This movement brought the whole nation together and people walked to Ayodhya in 1990, 1991 and they managed in 1992 to bring the structure down and put a small temple in a hut and waited again for the court to give final clearance of testing and every other thing. And when finally in 2019, the court gave a verdict saying, there was a temple over which the mosque was built. Archaeological evidence is there. Carbon dating is there. All this is there. And once that clearance was given in 19, uh, 2019, we started the construction again. So this is a very long history of our uh, movement there. And uh, this movement was mainly played, very strongly supported, nurtured by Vishwa Hindu Parishad. And Vishwa Hindu Parishad was formed in our ashram on Krishna Jayanti. And Gurudev was the founder president of Vishwa Hindu Parishad in 64 and uh, he guided them time to time how they should proceed with various Hindu issues and in which this Ram Mandir was also there. So I have one very nice video of Gurudev, his vision and how to sort this trouble. This was a talk he gave to youngsters, to Yuva Kendra members in Bombay. And this talk happened in our Sandipani ashram. Fortunately, I was a brahmachari studying that time in the ashram. So we were also allowed to listen to him and I've heard him actually talking live and we managed to get that clip today, what he spoke. In a talk called Youth Alone Can, he speaks about it. I want you to listen to it where he says, this is not a communal problem. It is not a communal dispute. It is a national program. And how moderate Muslims too came forward and saying, let's build this. So Gurudev had a very beautiful vision, a path-breaking solution. He said, Muslims should build this temple for us. And in another location in Ayodhya, Hindus will build them a mosque. This way we can show to the world universal brotherhood. Because this is not correct. Somebody can't come from Uzbekistan, from a foreign land and destroy your main temples, loot your country, uh, enslave your women, make them, put them into harem. And this monument there stood like a their victory tower. So he said that 30 corner of the history should be erased. It's a very lovely clip. And we have included... Uh, one of the very, very important archaeologists called K.K. Mohammed. K.K. Mohammed, we have even invited him recently into one of our Chinmay Mission programs where we called him to talk to us during C20, G20 program. There also he spoke. He's a very, very forthright practitioner of Islam who speaks truth. And he was one of the archaeologists who went and saw everything. So we have included his view too. 
in between the talk of Gurudev, we will bring in what KK Mohammed said, and then we continue back to Gurudev's talk. Can we have the screen, please? The youth alone can. Yours is going to be the future. So when you are in the present, you have got two responsibilities on your shoulders. Number one, you have to wipe clean some of the weaknesses that have come in the past. Number two, you have to remold the present to a covetable future. Both these responsibilities are on the shoulders of the youth. A nation where the youth have stopped thinking, it cannot survive in democracy. No, we must bring about a change. Take your responsibilities on your own shoulders. You have broad shoulders. This wonderful problem of India. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho, the Hindus and Muslims are fighting. For what? Rama Janma Bhumi. Have you looked at the problem properly? Rama Janma Bhumi, Krishna Janma Bhumi, Kashi, the most historical thing. All right. All those places, they built a mosque that the temple is in the lap of the mosque. This is not mosque for prayer. They were all victory monuments. Now the younger generation of Muslims want to wipe it clean. And in the 80s, many of the Muslims, then top leaders were also almost ready to hand it over so that, you know, a problem could be solved. There, this historian, especially Professor Rishwan Habib, Romila Tapar, and other Mars historian, R. S. Sharma, and uh, Dr. Cha, they came forward and they said, No, it has been the, the place has been excavated professor, by Professor B. Bilal. And he did not find any material from there. And so, Muslims, you should not hand it over the place to Hindu community. Think. And when they try to do so, the fundamentalists, the old school, will not allow them. Is it not a national program? Unless you want to vitiate it into a mere communal problem. It is a national problem. We are trying to revive the nation. What we are doing is only to bring out that consciousness both in the Hindus and in the Muslims, that we have wiped clean one dirty corner of our history, and to that extent, we are a nobler nation. Is it not then thereafter that Hindu, the youngsters or the Muslims and the Hindus will be coming into the main streamline of national resurgence? We will not both feel proud of their own nation. Will not the Hindus feel proud that I am a Hindu? Similarly, Islam will have the same pride that we have cleansed our past. Is it not? We have done our atonement for having ill-treated the Hindus and remold the present with the new strength that you discover in yourself, in your self-consciousness, that you are a nation. We will be able to build up the future and create a future new happily ever after. Yeah. Now this is what he was saying. Because there were a lot of Muslims in Bharat. Even now they are there. They clearly say, you can see, now today if you walk into Bharat, you walk into the roads, you will find Hindus, Muslims, both talking. Muslims coming out and saying, Ram is our forefather. We may follow Islam, but he's our forefather. Like Indonesia, they follow Islam, but by culture they say we are Hindus. And their national song is Ramayan. Similarly here too, today when now, right now the mood, we have never experienced a mood like this in Bharat. 
Everyone is so inspired because it was a 500 year patient wait. Went by law, law, law and got the whole thing done through Supreme Court. Being the majority we could have done, but we said, let the court give it. It took time. And naturally, when you fall and when you come back, you really come back strong. So this whole mandir which is coming up has created a deep conscience in everyone. Everyone is elated. You can see across in the television channels, you can see across in social media, and you walk into the houses, you will find people talking about it, people coming and saying, both Hindus and Muslims. When the verdict was given, I was in Philippines. We had some program there, and uh, I got a call from the National Security um, uh, NIA office from Bharat, saying, can you come down to Delhi as early as possible? Because the verdict has come on uh, Ram Janbhumi and we want to have a discussion between the Muslims and Hindus. Some sannyasis, we need to sit and talk to them how we can move forward uh, harmoniously. So we had the Muslim clerks were there, clergies were there, mullahs, maulanas were there, and few of Hindu sannyasis were there. And this meeting happened in Ajit Doval's home. We sat and we were discussing. We, we told the Muslim people saying, listen, it's Supreme Court in a democracy, Supreme Court is the highest order. We waited for the Supreme Court to give this verdict. Supreme Court has given this verdict. Right now, we will not... Uh, one second, what's happening? Huh. Right now, um, we will not celebrate it in a big way. This was in 2019, uh, on uh, um, November, when this happened. So we said, right now, we are not going to celebrate it in a big way. And we will not come out on the roads and do it. We will quietly accept the verdict joyfully. In our houses, we will light the lamps. But when the temple is built, it has to be historical. We want you guys also to join us that time. And all of them agreed, saying we will come. And today you will find so many people have come forward and joining the celebration. Why? Because they also are very clear. You have archaeological evidence. You have historical evidence. You have carbon dating. And every possible argument has happened on this. And the court has given that there was a temple of Lord Ram and that was destroyed by Baba. And today we are wiping that mistake off, which Gurudev said. And there's a great feeling across the country. So what are we doing on 22nd? There are a few things which we have planned to do and I'm just sharing that. One is we are bringing out a book. What Gurudev said about. So we call this book Divine Echoes. Rama, Ramayana, Ramarajya, Ramajanbabhumi. This is the cover of the book. It is called Divine Echoes. Rama, Ramayana, Ramarajya, and Rama Janmabhumi. You see the cover. Why I chose this as a cover is uh, on August 5th, 2020, we had the Bhumi Puja in Ayodhya. That was the time the curfew was there because of um, lockdowns were there. Uh, because of COVID, but the auspicious days and we decided a small group will do. Around 40 people were invited to do the Bhumi Puja. I was fortunate to go there that day. So we had a long journey. We drove down all the way from Chennai because the, all other transportations are not good during COVID. You should have your own car. So it was a long journey. We went and this kind of paintings the city had on the roads, small time artists, paint Ram there on the roadside, under a flyover, in a pillar, on the riverside, just like that. And that's that's the kind of weight they had. Go back to the cover, please. Yeah. Get back to the cover. Screen. Okay. So that's the artist. So we said, we took a picture of it and I said, uh, someday we will make a book and I want to use this uh, as the cover. And that's how this book has this cover. Uh, unknown roadside artist has painted it. We took it up because that shows the emotion and the feeling of those. And that is the cover for this book. 
and the content of the book i will uh, just show the content page or just go to the fourth uh, chapter yes can you make it slightly bigger yeah here in this section this is the fourth chapter you have what gurudev said to all and one such lovely incident was he wrote a letter to one of our devotees suhasini she probably asked some questions why uh, so much of uh, struggle and uh, uh, you know like animosity in the nation because of this temple at that time so he replied to her and she wrote this to gurudev on 9th november 30 years later on that same day the verdict came 9th november so in that letter he has said to her after 1500 years of neglect when we strive to revive our culture we must pay its price how many monkeys died in ram ravan war we will build the temple and you will see you will see its inauguration now this is what he said that time that this temple will be built and you will see its inauguration and like that there are so many paper cuttings where he says one where he says i support the building of ram temple at ayodhya and i appreciate the action of kar sevaks on december 6th i appreciate that and then the next quote again on a press meet what he has said i condone all actions of kar sevaks the demolition was a result of teasing of the majority community it is not a tradition to destroy mosques if it was a mosque i would have condemned the destruction it was only mosque shaped if they had been praying calling allah it would have been as sacred as guru ayurappan it wasn't a mosque because there was no namaz done there in that place for 45 years but just sheer stubbornness misguided and some political advantage they dragged it after independence for 45 years so this is what he did so in this book we have his quotes like this in another place he says in the next quote he says i have been asking vhp to set a deadline inform the government to take action before that these are gurudev's words sir i have been asking vhp to fix a deadline wait and if they are not if the government crosses the deadline the if the date gets expiry vhp should deem fit what they want to do and this is how he has inspired them and uh, this book is all about so you have lovely quotes of uh, gurudev on rama what he means ramayana what is its influence on bharatiya culture ram rajya administration principles ram rajya and ram janma bhumi luckily there is one devotee of gurudev padma padma shri she is a she was gurudev secretary and uh, i asked her can we compile these in less than 48 hours she compiled the whole thing not even 48 hours 36 hours and then gave us these quotes and we also checked here and there and added few so this has come out a lovely book gurudev on all these four topics so this book would be released that's one way of celebrating where we remember him and what he, what the book meant for him and as i told you earlier it's vhp people who have worked really hard for this i want you now to oh by the way we are also releasing a, a table top calendar please put the calendar on the screen please 31 days daily one quote of the calendar uh oh, this needs to be zoomed okay let's take um, what uh, lakshman said this calendar is about what different people have told about ram what sita talks about ram what lakshman speaks about ram 
what Dashrath says, Kausalya says, or enemies of Ram, like uh, Kumbhakarna, what he says. That way, what different people have said about Ram is what you find in this calendar. So please go to the quote what Lakshman said. Screen. Ha. Ah. Zoom it a bit, please. And all these paintings were done by Arun Ram, one of our UOVs. He has done the painting. We have 108 of them. And this is what Lakshman says. Whatever ties of affection, love and confidence exist in the world, as declared by the Vedas, for me, they are all centered in you and you alone, my Lord. O friend of the afflicted, O knower of the innermost hearts of all. Lakshman calls out Ram as this. Whatever ties of affection, love, confidence exist in the world as declared by the Vedas, for me, they are all centered in you. That's how Lakshman saw. Because when Lakshman was born, Ram was there. From then onwards, Lakshman was with Ram. All others were separated. But Lakshman went with Ram to the forest and stayed with Ram in the forest, came back to the palace. He was still with Ram. So this Lakshman, who was with Ram so closely, and his words are this, whatever ties of affection and love and confidence that exist in the world, as declared by the Vedas, for me, they are all centered in you and you alone. My Lord, this is what he says. We can also have one more quote and then, then we can go to the other video clip. Go to the quote Wali. What Wali said about Ram when Wali was shot down. Twenty-eight. Yeah. yeah. Wali says here, his Rama shot the arrow, Wali is fallen down, his wife and son, Tara and Angad come running to Wali. He's telling them, listen, my timid darling, the Lord of Ragus looks up, looks upon all with the same eye. He looks at everybody with the same eye. Even if he kills me, I will attain his divine abode and have him as my eternal Lord. Don't worry if I'm going to die. Because he is a man without any partiality. He's got Samadarshan. When Sri Ram heard this most tender speech of Wali talking to his wife and son, he stroked his head and his, with his hand and spoke these words. I make your body immortal. You may keep your life. Ram is offering this to Wali. Saying, Wali, I give you your life and you take this body and your life, you can stay immortal if you want. Wali replies, this is so beautiful. Wali says here, Wali replied, listen, O ocean of mercy, O Karuna Sagara, sages, saints, sannyasis, you know, sages continue their efforts for God realization through many births. Aneka Janma Samprapta. But at the last moment, they failed to utter the name of Rama. When death comes, we do not know what happens. Many people are not meditative. Very few have a meditative death. Most die very ordinary death. So to remember at the time of death is not easy. So he says many sages through many births, but at the last moment, they failed to utter the name of Rama. But he, on the strength of whose name, Lord Shankara bestows immortality on all alike, has appeared in visible form before my very eyes. Shall I ever get such a golden opportunity again? Will I get even a chance like this again? Even sages who are meditating miss taking your name. You are in front of me. I take your name. I'm seeing you. And with this thought, if I die, what a noble death that is. Am I a fool to miss this opportunity? 
I don't want life. I don't want that immortality. Don't give me back life. Wali, who was shot by Ram, these were his words. So how an enemy looks at Ram, how a devotee looks at Ram, how saints look at Ram. So we have, we have people like Agastya, Valmiki, Vishwamitra, Tulsidas, Kamban, Gurudev, saint section, what they say. Family members, Bharat, Lakshman, Kausalya, Kaikeyi, Sumitra, Dasharat, Janaka, what they say about Ram. And uh, even his enemies, what they say about Ram. So this is made that way. And this is a great, uh, uh, you know, like tribute to him that every day we read one thought and that can help us. So there are 31 thoughts in this and this is a calendar. So the content, the source for this is uh, Valmiki Ramayan, Kamba Ramayan, Tulasi Ramayan and Adhyatma Ramayan. From these four sources we have taken. So this is another thing which we are releasing and I'm sure uh, this would inspire everybody to see how those close people saw. Now, as I told you, uh, told you earlier, VHP played a vital role in building this temple, in keeping the struggle on. They did not quit. They had full faith and Gurudev inspired them. Here is a video where a VHP worker speaks about Gurudev, how he has inspired them, what role he played in mobilizing the strength to achieve this goal. Let's have the video clip, please. Sorry, just before we start the video, um, if everyone, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask Swamiji, you can start dropping them in the chat. And when we come to question and answer session, then me and the other moderators will be just uh, running through that. But if you want to start doing that now, go ahead. Okay, play it, please. Ayodhya me Shri Ram Mandir ke liye पांच सदियों का संघर्ष अब सार्थक हो गया है मंदिर दिखने लगा है किंतु इस मंदिर की नींव में समर्पण त्याग बलिदान और सामाजिक चेतना के उद्घोष की अनकही कहानियां हैं वो कहानियां इसकी आधारशिला इसकी नींव है पांचजन्य की ये प्रस्तुति इन्हीं कहानियों के नाम चिन्मय मिशन के संस्थापक स्वामी चिन्मयानंद जी विश्व हिंदू परिषद के पहले अध्यक्ष थे उल्लेखनीय है कि 29 अगस्त 1964 को जन्माष्टमी के दिन मुंबई के सांदीपनी आश्रम में विश्व हिंदू परिषद की स्थापना हुई थी उसी विश्व हिंदू परिषद ने उन्नीस में श्री राम जन्मभूमि आंदोलन को अपने हाथ में लिया स्वामी चिन्मयानंद जी से एक साक्षात्कार में पूछा गया था अयोध्या के बारे में आपका क्या विचार है क्या मंदिर बनना आवश्यक है स्वामी जी ने प्रश्न करने वाले से ही पूछा जिससे मैं बात कर रहा हूं वो हिंदू है या कुछ और और आप हिंदू होकर मुझसे पूछ रहे हो कि अयोध्या में राम मंदिर बनना चाहिए या नहीं राम मंदिर पर मेरा मंतव्य पूछ रहे हो ऐसा प्रश्न यदि आप मुझसे पूछते हो तो आप मेरा अपमान कर रहे हो एक और प्रश्न था अयोध्या के मामले में बहुत रक्त बह गया इस पर स्वामी जी ने कहा जब आपका जन्म हुआ तब भी रक्त बहा था राष्ट्र का निर्माण और उत्थान रक्त से ही होता है और राष्ट्र रक्त में ही नष्ट हो जाता है अयोध्या पर भी रक्त बहेगा इससे ही मंदिर का निर्माण होगा स्वामी जी न्यायालय के बाहर बातचीत से मामले को हल करने के पक्षधर थे चाहते थे मामला सुलझे ढांचा टूटने पर स्वामी जी ने कहा था कि जर्जर ढांचे को टूट ही जाना था उनका मानना था कि तुष्टिकरण की नीति ही अयोध्या में मंदिर निर्माण के कार्य में अड़चन बनी हुई है वो मानते थे कि सरकारों ने ही इस मामले को उलझाया है पहली धर्म संसद में राम जन्मभूमि आंदोलन को विश्व हिंदू परिषद ने अपनाया था उस सम्मेलन का प्रस्ताविक भाषण स्वामी चिन्मयानंद जी ने दिया था उडुपी के द्वितीय धर्म संसद में भी स्वामी जी ने ही प्रस्तावित भाषण दिया था जिन्होंने प्रस्तावित भाषण दिया प्रस्ताव रखा भूमिका रखी उस सपने को साकार करने के लिए संघर्ष किया वो प्रस्ताव वो सपना वो सामाजिक आंदोलन सारी स्मृतियां जैसे इस मंदिर से जुड़ी हैं, उसी तरह स्वामी जी से जुड़ी है द लास्ट थ्री इयर्स ऑफ गुरुदेव लाइफ 90, 91, 92, 93 
at that time, Ram Janmabhoomi movement was peak. And he was with VHP at every time. And there he addressed the second meeting also, the first and the second, where they had the Samelan to take action plan. And he was presiding that. And the final press meet, what he gave, were all in 93. So he was very keen, last few years of Gurudev, he was very, very keen to have this mandir built. And now it's coming out in a very beautiful way, grand way. So how are we celebrating? I told you about these books and all that. What else can we do? In Chennai, we have said, and I have shared this idea with uh, Vidya Bharati, an institute in India. They have 26,000 schools. I told them, and they also like this idea, and that's how we're doing. We have schools, Chinmaya Vidyalaya. We have told our children on 22nd, which is a Monday, working day, we will not shut the school, but you should come to school in your traditional wear. And the color code is blue. Rama's color, infinity. So blue color is the code. And the Attire should be traditional wear. And we celebrate, you know, uh, you know, like we have few havens in the school. And the live streaming of the event which is happening in Ayodhya would be shown in every classroom. Children will be watching live what is happening in the, in Ayodhya, live streaming. And after that, there is a skit. Each school will play one portion of Ramayan. Somebody will do it in uh, Cambodian style. Another school would do it in Bali style. And like that, each school is taking, adopting one, one method and doing it. So each school is celebrating Ramayan, one, two scenes. And in the evening, the whole school will be well lit with lamps and uh, fireworks, crackers. This is how we celebrate in the school. And also, we have taken this up, and this is a cute idea I'm just sharing. Some of you can try it out. Um, the school children, the little ones, LKG, UKG, first standard, second standard, that age group, they will be sitting, let us say, in the basketball court. And there'll be a nice platform created in the middle. And we bring Ram through a drone. He comes down. From the terrace, we fly the drone. Let us say, the children are watching. Ram lands there. Ram Ayenge. That song is there, very popular. And then Ram comes, actually. So that would excite children. And there would be chanting. And they'll all come, offer flowers. And Ram then will go to the next school. He'll once again fly. And the drone goes to the next school. So this is how we have planned quite a bit, making it creative, interesting, because it was a long dream and we are fortunate it has happened in our time. We are fortunate that uh, we are around to see this. So I suggest to all who are watching, this is Diwali 2 for us. 2024, we have two Diwalis. One is, to, one is on 22nd. So whatever you do for Diwali, please do it on 22nd. Buy new clothes. Light up your homes. Light up your centers. Crap, fireworks, sweets, everything. Because it was such a long legal wait. Held on to what is dharma and we have achieved. So the mood is very different. We need to do. So we shouldn't stop. And Gurudev said very clearly, when you read the quotes, he has said, we are asking for the other two also. Varanasi and Mathura, Krishna Janmabhumi and Kashi. Please remember, we have the strength today to reclaim everything we have lost. We are not that dull nation. We are not that tamasic nation what it was once being kicked around. Today we negotiate well. We stood up. There's a different kind of a progress in the country. We have now reached 4 trillion economy after British looting 45 trillion economy from us. Today we have reached 4 trillion. When we get to 5, 6, poverty in India would be passed. 
So economically, we are doing well. We have the power to negotiate. And when world suffered, we distributed free vaccines. To how many people across the globe? How many small countries we, su we supported? Because our philosophy says, Vasudeva Kutumbakam, we are one family. But what is lost, we will reclaim everything. Geography here, areas of Bharat which is lost, will also be reclaimed. Cultural positions will be reclaimed. Temples which were destroyed will be reclaimed. Vishwaguru position will be reclaimed. It will take some more time, but that will happen. It may not happen in our lifetime. Like Guru, Guru they worked for it. It didn't happen in his lifetime. After him, it happened. Similarly, these dreams we need to sustain. That reclaim should be passed over generation to generation. Tell our stories, what we went through, how we have lost things, how we have to slowly reclaim, get back to that position, give the world the best philosophy that we are one family. This is how we should look at this. And it was a great opportunity for the nation to come together. Personally, I feel overwhelmed because uh, I was present there for the Bhumi Puja. And when Prime Minister finished the puja, we went to that spot and I looked, I took little sand from there, the mud, mitti, and I applied it in my forehead. On doing so, some of the other people like Data GORSS and few others came and they said, please put it for us also. Well, that's the sentiment. And to everybody, like they all were smearing a bit of that mud on their forehead. And that was like we waited for Ram to come. And right now it is built. And the last point, uh, we will have a camp sometime in Deepavali in Ayodhya. Because right now it's so, it, those who are invited only can go. Um, because it's so, Ayodhya is a small town and uh, it can't take population. But VHP is organizing it very well. They're making sure that one lakh people have darshan every day for next three months. One lakh every day. Food accommodation will be provided free. Because when people came forward to support the mandir, the funds flew, just came in. 3,200 crores just collected within a few days. And so whoever is coming there, food and accommodation is provided free. And they want to bring one lakh devotees every day. So it's going to be crowded now. But uh, Deepavali also will be very crowded, but we will have a camp that time. And I have planned the camp like uh, we'll go to Sri Lanka first. The trial of Rama is there, where Rama moved in Sri Lanka, where Sita stayed in Sri Lanka, where Vibhishan was crowned in Sri Lanka. All these places are there. We'll go there and then fly from there to Ayodhya. Pushpaka Viman route. So that camp we are planning We'll see how well we can do it. And that would be sometime in uh, October 30th is Deepavali. So let's see uh, there. Now, all of us will watch the live streaming. And those of us who are fortunate to be there, we will witness the history happening. And uh, through live streaming, let us watch it. But remember, we have started reclaiming. We will not stop. We will reclaim everything. Thank you very much. Now we can open up for questions, please. Thank you so much, Swamiji. That was beautiful. Um, the first question we have over here is from Pradyumna from Coimbatore. Um, they've asked, how long has the Ram Mandir been there? Apparently, there was a Buddhist temple in the 7th century. Also, there are so many contradicting views and information. How does one do the right research? Uh, you have to go by not popular narratives. You have to go by the court and the archaeological department's version. Go find those own papers and look at it. Popular narratives have different agendas. So what you need to do that is uh, go to the court. I mean, go take those papers, what the court has done. It was a dispute discussed and discussed and discussed for that long many years. 
what the archaeological department says, there you will see it was a temple of Ram. And people have followed. There's a geographical area. Temples are there. Rishis have taught, spoken about it. Other books speak about it. Guru Gobind Singh, I mean, what is that? Uh, Guru Granth Sahib talks about Ayodhya. Do you have evidences in so many other books? And all that has to be taken into consideration, not a popular demand saying this was, you know, built by somebody else and someone did. We believe very strongly Ram built it. I mean, Ram was born there and this temple was built. So do your own research. Go to the original sources and find. You will find your answers. Yep, next. The next question we have is from Likith from Singapore. Um, he's asked, the temple hasn't been completely built. Is it right to do Pran Pratista still or should it be done after it's completed? When we build a small temple, you know, like a small temple, the whole thing will be done in a day. When you build a massive temple, like the temples we have in South India, you know, Madurai Minakshi Aman temple took three generations to build. There are temples like that in Bharat, huge, massive. Uh, these temples take a lot of time. So in these temples, the first thing which they built is Garbhagraha. Garbhagraha is completed. So this is a Prana Pratishta, where the idol is installed and we bring in uh, certain mantras by which we see this idol is alive. That is called Prana Pratishta. When a Garbhagraha is complete, Prana Pratishta can be done. And there the pujas will begin. But the temple, the next idols, you know, the next uh, towers, etc., they build slowly. So that will take a little more time. So Garbhagraha is done and Prana Pratishta can be done in Garbhagraha according to the Shastras. That is complete. The peripheral areas, when you go into an old uh, ancient uh, Hindu temples in South India, you will find there is a place for Rama, there is a place for Krishna, there is Shiva, different deities. They are all built slowly, slowly. That way, the rest of the things will be completed by Diwali. So here we are talking about Prana Pratishta. It's perfectly fine to do it. There's nothing wrong. Once the Garbhagraha is completed, Prana Pratishta can be done. And that's how it was done in most of the temples. Old ancient temples, they were huge. One king could not build it. It took generations. So they will do Prana Pratishta for one and that will continue. But the temple expansion will happen. When the master plan is completed after three generations, 120 years, 130 years, those days, then there will be a Mahakumbha Bishekam. So don't mistake Mahakumbha Bishekam with Prana Pratishta. Prana Pratishta, when Garbhagraha is done, that is enough. Yeah. Thanks, Swamiji. Um, the next question is from Dinesh from Tamara Ipakam, who says, could you give us some counterpoints to counter opposition or so-called neutral people of the Ram Mandir? If we don't answer them, then they feel they are right. What, what we spoke today is all facts. And uh, why temple? Yeah, it, uh, it's the culture. Why not a college? As we are short of colleges, we have built colleges. Why not a hospital? We have built hospitals. These are questions which doesn't really have uh, depth. They ask, you know, why not have a hospital built there instead of a temple? Why do you ask these questions only when it comes to Hindu temples? As if colleges are not built in the country. That is a particular place where a person's faith is involved. Imagine an invader coming. Are you not ashamed that somebody can walk into your country, trap your women, put them into harem, destroy your places of worship, humiliate you. And when you are in a position to reclaim it, that should be reclaimed. We are wiping off the mistakes, like Gurudev said. We are wiping off the mistakes of the past. Which was standing there as ugly reminders. That somebody can invade your country and break your main temple. Like I told you, the seven places, Ayodhya, Mathura, Kashi, Saptapuri, three of it was destroyed there only. So 
it is wiping out the mistake and coming back. So these arguments don't stand, uh, you know, like uh, why not a temp, uh, why not a hospital, etc. It's quite uh, childish. One doesn't see it. <laughs> don't waste time with these people. They'll keep uh, jabbering. Uh, we move on. Focus more on celebration. These guys will also join in line. Thanks, Swamiji. The next question is from Kusum, who's a student studying in Chinmaya Vishwa Vidya Peet. Um, they've asked, while we do not, um, while we are not obligated to answer to anyone, how do we make people understand that RSS is not hint is not non-Hindu hating, but rather does the much needed work of awakening Hindus? Huh. We have to, we, we have never hated anybody. We have extended. When there is a progress which happens, it is open for all, isn't it? When the government builds toilets, it is open for all in every house. It doesn't look, when uh, electricity reaches uh, villages, it reaches the benefits as for all. We have lived that way. We are not prejudiced that only this community will get the benefit and this will not get the benefit. Or only when you convert, I'll give it to you. This is not our culture. We have respected, we have lived that culture. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina. So the schemes what we have got, the government or the, the programs we do are for everybody's benefit. These are mainly done. And few fringe elements opposed. Imagine if Dr. Abdul Kalam walks inside, will we not touch his feet? What a loving Indian he was and what he has contributed to the nation. So there's no animosity. Some people exaggerate of few people. That's why Gurudev said many people in Islam community has spoken to him. You will find that in the quote, in one of the quotes in the book, he says, they have come and spoken to me saying that temple should be built. Today also, you put on the TV and watch, go to social media and watch how many Muslims are saying, Ram Amara Dada hai. My grandfather, we belong to that. So there's no harm. So we should not worry about uh, this. We are not going to uh, belittle anybody, but we should speak our truth. We should be proud. We should say strongly. When you are standing strong and saying, I am a Hindu, in which way are you hurting anybody? You're not hurting anybody. So that you can say. Overreactions were given. Over-exaggerations were done. And to say even I'm a Hindu looks fanatic. How can I'm a Hindu can be fanatic? I'm a man, I'm a man. That's a fact. I'm a Hindu, I'm a Hindu. That's a fact. I'm a woman, I'm a woman. These are facts. And one need not be ashamed. And by saying that, we are not insulting anybody. So this uh, exaggerated narrative which has been developed... Uh, to feel shy and not to say how other person would be hurt. Why should other person be hurt? If someone is celebrating Christmas, are you hurt? When they celebrate, na, you know, Miladi Navi and all that, are you hurt? No. We say, very good, your festival you celebrate. We believed in coexistence. Yes, the problem will arise when one community says, my book alone is right. My path alone is right. Your book is not correct. Your path is not right. When one becomes a fanatic of this kind, conflict arises. That's when the conflict comes. Otherwise, where? We say all paths are fine. You take up anything, you will reach God. This is what we have been saying. And we have coexisted. Nobody has to teach us accommodativeness or coexistence. By nature, Hindu is, uh, is a person who will coexist. But that coexistence should not be misunderstood as timidness, should not be misunderstood as, uh, you know, like you can throw anything at them. They'll be quiet. No. Stand up for what you, what is your right. And say, and, and more things happen when you live that way. They see, here is a person living, a very honest person following his values. They listen to you. We don't have to worry about, uh, you know, these kind of arguments which come up. They don't have basis. Those days are gone. Those days are gone. I told you now, we have changed, we are moving forward. Don't try to keep the old narrative. Lot has happened and we are moving forward. We are, we are now in an era of Hindu assertiveness. So nothing to worry. 
Thank you, Swamiji. I can see the time that we're just at the end of the session. We still have a few more questions up to you, whether you want to take a few more, maybe one or two, or if you're happy yes, to finish yes, now. Yes, just one more. And you save the questions and send. We can probably, you know, like uh, uh, reply later. Perfect. Um, so the last question for today. Hindus have been divided by region, language, caste, and many more. How do we convince people of accusing the government promoting North Indian temples like Ram Janma Bhumi, um, but not talking of Lord Rama's temple um, in Bandrakalam, etc., rather than rebuilding dilapidated temples? Uh, listen, to control people, you have to keep dividing. When it is Bharat, when we see it as Bharat, we see it as one. When you see it has uh, southern in Bharat, northern Bharat, Dakshin Uttar, then divisions arise. These divisions are in our mind. We have to expand our vision to see it as Bharat. Suppose this has happened to Madurai Minakshi Amman Temple, destroyed totally. And if that is being rebuilt, all of Bharat would celebrate that. Madurai Minakshi Amman Temple is not for Tamilians alone. It's for the whole Bharat. Ayyappa is not only for people living in Kerala. It's for whole Bharat. So we need that one nation vision. Sometimes we start looking at it through small, 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 uh, you know, like petty visions. And they keep this narrative. Bharat was union of states. Uh -huh. We were Bharat long before. It was not born in 1947. Our Sankalpa, Sankalpa, which we take daily. Don't we say Bharata Kande? Bharata That came in 1947? Or from when are we saying that? Even British, when they came, they came to East India Company. East India. They did not say Kolkata Company. Or Vasco da Gama when he found sea route, what, which they claimed. We were sailing 2,000 years before Vasco da Gama. But even when they make such claims, they say he found the sea route. You say he found the sea route to what? Sea route to India. So India existed for you in 14th century. You did not say he found sea route to Calicut. So Bharat existed always. From the Himalayas to the ocean in the south, it was Bharat. The Sankalpa we take says it. These are some people who have picked up narratives because we are not well informed. Our children are not well informed because we don't talk, we don't take these topics. Therefore, we are not giving them right answers. Uh, if you study a little more on all this, uh, then you will have answers to say. When was it not Bharat? Why do you call it Union of States? It was Bharat, one nation, that's it. So that bigger vision, these divisions will disappear. And our books talk about it too, isn't it? Go beyond Jati, Niti, Kula, Gotra, Dorakam, Nama, Rupa, Guna, Dosha, Varjitam. Adi Shankara said that. Go beyond all these limitations. The vision should be, I am that. That vision we should give because, please remember, Bharat is the custodians of Brahma Vidya. The other parts of the world doesn't have it. We need to preserve it. We need to promote it. It's our responsibility. To give the world a universal vision is our responsibility. Our books speak about it. It's really nice that the Prime Minister brought uh, Vasudeva Kutumbakam as the theme, motto, for G20 countries. That the whole world is one family. It is from the Upanishad. Whoever thought some years ago, a oh, Upanishadic line will become a motto for G20 countries. I told you now, it's our time. The era of assertive Hinduism. We are here to reclaim. You will watch it for sure. Thank you very much, everybody. I enjoyed talking to you. And let us celebrate it as best as we can. This is another Deepavali for us. Jai Sri Ram.
Hari Om. Thank you, Swamiji. Um, I've just put a few links in the chat for a link to Swami Chinmayananda's Instagram page, as well as the Instagram pages for Chick India and Global Chick. As Guru, they've said the youth are the future. So keep updated with all of the activities that Chick are doing both across India and across the world. And Pranams, thank you again, Swamiji, for your time. I speak on the behalf of everyone, but I really, really appreciated that. And yeah, I'm very excited to celebrate in blue next Monday. So yeah, yes. thank you very much. Oh, okay. <laughs> Pooja, thank you. Oh, Sagarika, Pratik, thank you. Kavya, thank you for uh, putting this program together. Best wishes, everybody. Once again, Jai Sri Ram.